Hello and welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray for Rhino, designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to render still images. We will start with using V-Ray Interactive Rendering for test renders, then we'll move on to production rendering. By following these steps, you'll be able to create your very first realistic images using V-Ray. Don't forget to download the project files linked in the video description to experiment with the scene at your own pace. Let's jump in. First, open the V-Ray Asset Editor. V-Ray is a ray tracing engine that supports CPU and GPU rendering. Using CUDA, you can render using both your CPU and GPU at the same time and even take advantage of RTX technology. You can render in progressive or bucket sampling modes when you're in production mode. Progressive rendering calculates the entire image data when you're rendering. Bucket rendering only calculates a selected part of an image at a time. So progressive is great for seeing the whole image all at once and gets clearer over time. You can set a time limit for how long you want it to render and stop it whenever you think the image is clean enough. Then you can use the denoiser. On the other hand, use non-progressive or buckets for better allocation of your computer's CPU or GPU. Distributed rendering with Swarm uses less of your system's RAM, especially with high-resolution renders and things like high-frequency details and bump mapping. You can also render interactively with IPR, meaning you get immediate feedback when you change something in your scene. Or send your scene to Chaos Cloud Rendering Service. This lets you get your rendering done faster or keep working while it's rendering. Here in the V-Ray All-in-One tab, you'll find shortcut buttons for rendering. Now let's start with IPR for testing and interactively improving the scene renders. Depending on your hardware configuration, we can use GPU or CPU. If you turn on the denoising option, it will do an extra calculation to smooth out the image while it's rendering. Depending on your hardware, you can evaluate whether to use your CPU or GPU. Next, change the effect rate so all post effects like denoiser, lens effects, sharpness, and blur happen quickly. Now to use some smart solutions, turn on the light cache during interactive rendering. With this pre-calculation, we can make our workflow better like automatically setting the light balance and exposure values for the camera, making lighting adaptive, and rendering faster. In a bit, we'll see what it does. When you start rendering, the image might be overexposed. You can change the exposure value from the slider, but the easiest way is to use the light cache pre-pass. Using the auto buttons, V-Ray will automatically set the right exposure value and white balance. Save the current state in a snapshot because we'll use them later. You can save different aspects of V-Ray's settings and parameters. Save the current image into VFB history for future use. Now we're going to use V-Ray's sun and sky for lighting the environment. Let's turn off the sun and turn on the dome, which will block the sky. In the texture parameter, make sure it's set to spherical mapped. Using IPR, you don't need to stop rendering when you make some changes, even if you change the current view. Adjust the H rotation based on your design taste. Let's change the camera's aspect ratio and resolution. Save the image again in your VFB history. Save the current state of the scene in a snapshot. Stop IPR to switch to production rendering. Since we'll use production mode, use the V-Ray denoiser because it's more accurate. Set the quality you want from the slider. Now, let's see how to render in a non-progressive way using bucket rendering. I have some tips and tricks for you. In production mode, you can set the denoiser to come in at the end. When using progressive, we can make the most of the computer's resources until the end of rendering and then denoise. With buckets, the denoise, lens effects, sharpness, and blur come in at the end, no matter what the effect settings are. Let's start rendering. V-Ray uses buckets based on the number of CPU threads you have. You can use the full mouse cursor option to point to the area you want to render first. Now let's see how to create a VR image. This is a 360-degree image. You can use spherical and cube projections. 
let's go with spherical panorama. Note that we automatically change the aspect ratio to 2 by 1. Increase the resolution because we're making a panorama image. Set the view to Cam VR. Rendering such a high resolution image will take more time on one computer than on many. If you have more than one computer, use a smart solution for distributed rendering called V-Ray Swarm. Choose the default or custom tag based on your computers and start rendering. All dedicated computers kick in to render our image. Save the image into VFB history to watch your image directly from VFB. Go to view and use the panorama viewer. Now you can see the viewer image as if you were in another app. Let's set GPU rendering. Use CUDA or RTX depending on your hardware. Let's use progressive sampling this time. Because the previous standard camera had a portrait aspect ratio, set it to HD again. Switch back to sun and sky and update the snapshot state. Now, instead of rendering our images one by one, we'll use batch rendering. Select only the ones you want to render, viewports or snapshots. The first option is to render the batch on your computer. The second is to send the images to Chaos Cloud. The approach is the same. How to render on Chaos Cloud we'll see in a moment. Start local batch rendering. If you don't set the output folder, V-Ray will save the processed image next to your scene. The next option for rendering is to send your rendering to Chaos Cloud. If you don't have powerful enough hardware, you want to render Ultra HD resolution or just want to continue working with your computer at full power, Chaos Cloud is a great option. Let's prepare our production rendering for post-processing. From the Render Elements tab, create some essential render elements. Crypto Mat for smart masking based on materials or objects and Light Mix for lighting if you need this one. And Back to Beauty for recreating the image. To store all this information in one file, you need to save the image as a V-Ray image file format. This will be sent from Chaos Cloud when saved and exporting the rendering result. You can learn more about cloud rendering from the Chaos site. Send the rendering using the Cloud button. The scene will be checked for errors. Here you can create your own project. The aspect ratio and the resolution can be changed here too. You can set a credit limit. This is useful when rendering with Progressive Sampler. The last thing to do is hit Submit for rendering. The structure of Chaos Cloud is really easy to navigate. You can watch the rendering happen in real time and stop it if something seems off. You can also open the rendering at any time while it's in progress. When it's all done, you can download your file, which will contain your rendered image and any render elements you've added. Thanks for sticking around till the end. By now, we've gone through how to render still images, from test renders to the production stage. We've learned how to do this locally one by one, or batch rendering, and we've talked about using a render farm with Swarm or even outsourcing to Chaos Cloud. We've seen how we can do this with either CPU or GPU, or even hybrid rendering. Make sure to check out the other videos in our beginner series for V-Ray for Rhino. You can also visit our blog and look through our documentation for more tips and tricks about our products. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon.